Good morning, students. Mr. Sam on the line once again. Today we'll be looking at the topic of narrative in literature, specifically prose. You know, prose is one of the genres of literature. There are three major genres of literature, specifically three: drama, poetry, and prose. Some days back. We began a discussion on drama and uh, today we are looking at prose and we title it narrative in literature at the end of this class i expect you to be able to define narrative identify some importance of a narrative narrative is a story of course in the study of English, several times you've had your teachers asking you to tell a story of your choice that usually will end with a particular topic. So a narrative could be fiction or non-fiction, depending on which type you want to write. If it's fictional, it means that the story is not real. You are creating it from your imaginations. And if it's non-fictional, then the story is real. Take for instance, examples of fictions include novel, short stories, prose. Examples of non-fictions include biography, autobiography, epistolary. So, the term narrative can be used as a noun or an adjective. So, as a noun, narrative refers to the story being told. So, it's a name, a narrative. So, as a verb, you are being directed to do. So, when somebody asks you to narrate a story, it's asking you to tell a story. Now, the story becomes the narrative. So, it is the account of events, experiences, and details. So most of the books of arts that you read are usually classified as fiction or non-fiction. So a narrative also refers to the storytelling telling process. As an adjective, it describes the form or style of the story being told. So let's see examples of narrative, for instance. If you look at narrative, when used as a noun, you will find many examples. But one thing that is very, very sure about a narrative is that every narrative, every novel, every prose has a point of view from which they are written. So the point of view has to do with the perception of the director, what the message he intends to pass, how he intends to pass that message so this is point of view you on the other side the reader you are supposed to bury yourself in the point of view of the narrator and you know every narrative cannot be complete without the character of course there must be a character which makes the narrative very very worthwhile so all the essays you write Articles you write, be it descriptive, storytelling, most times fall under narrative. So you must be very careful to differentiate between a narrative from a real writer. Like I mentioned in literature specifically, a real writer should be things like epistolary, biography, Autobiography, memo, travelogue, journal. Let's continue. Let's see some of the importance of a narrative. Don't get it twisted. Know at the back of your mind that a narrative can also be called a prose. So, assuming we have a diagram where we need to itemize how a narrative should be like. 
So begin to imagine that in this diagram, you will see narrative appearing either as a short story or a prose, which could be a novel or a novelette or a novella, as the case may be, or a fantasy or a romance. So for us in literature, what we call romance is a story, an adventure, where you have your hero embarking on a life-saving situation. So romance is not what you think it is. In literature, romance pictures a hero that must go through so many ups and down to save a situation. Now, the importance of the narrative. Everyone loves a story. Everyone has a story. Also know that there is no story that is written in vacuum. Every writer writes out of an experience, though that may not be visible to you as a reader, but is visible to the writer. So it could be from his stream of consciousness, from the flow of his thoughts, from the flow of his imagination, what he has pictured from his imagination. So he put those lines down and you are able to read. So that is why we say that no writer writes in vacuum. But one thing you must also note is that for every story you read, it represents reality. That is a concept that we call verisimilitude. Verisimilitude is a concept that explains that every work of art must not be far from reality. So whether the story is true or not, just know at the back of your mind that there is no story that has not existed before. So if it is fantasy, if it is myth, we have no way to to defend some of these things that happen in myth or legend. Why? Because we were not there. So we do not know. Take for instance the story of the creation of a man according to the Hausa version, the Yoruba version, the Igbo version. Because you are not there, you cannot confirm or you cannot tell precisely whether these stories are true. But still know that these stories because they carry the concept of verisimilitude, they are appreciated. So that is why it is important to use narratives. Narrative is an engaging writing style. Of course, you can't do a narrative without getting yourself engaged. Because everything you are going to be doing must come from the inside of you. And the importance of the narrative is that it immediately invites your audience into your world and offers them a chance to participate in the story you are telling. So this is where imagery comes. Now, imagine I'm talking, I'm discussing about uh, the fall of man, how Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. For you to understand this narrative, you will need to develop it, have a mental picture, and follow me into the garden and begin to see Adam begin to see it. And that's how you will understand what the narrative is all about. So, no narrative can survive outside imagery. The imagery is the mental picture that you must create as you read your narrative. That is what gives it life. That is what makes it very, very worthwhile to you as you read. Another importance is that a reader can easily get wrapped up in a narrative. Of course, if the narrative is well presented, a reader gets easily wrapped up in it. That is where suspense comes. So suspense is that attribute, one of the elements in the narrative where you, you sit tight, fast to your chair, you want to get a clue of the next thing that will come on board in the course of reading your narrative. Why? Because the writer has created an atmosphere of anxiety where you would want to know the next thing. So it is also a style that invites discussion and participation. So every 
work of art, especially in narrating, needs your participation. How? You are not writing, but your imagery shows that you are part. The mental picture the writer creates, as you picture it, as you act in it, it means you are part of the narrative. Then, by using it, you tell your audience that this story is not over. Yes. Assuming you are the one writing the narrative, it will be very, very nice if you are able to create a state where your audience becomes part of the story and they will want to participate in virtually everything that is being said. And that is where the issue of very similitude comes. So you try to make your narrative uh, real, try to make your narrative worthwhile, don't so much bring in elements of fantasy. Even though we have fantasy as an example of a narrative, but you try as much as possible not to bring in elements of fantasy so as to carry and to sense the picture of reality into your audience. So the importance is that they can take it home and think about it. They can retell it and to it, add to it and change it. So you see, you, you can build up from every story you have listened to, every story that is written, you can rewrite the story. So take for instance, I can decide to rewrite uh, that book, um, Call any of your books that you are reading now, any books. I can decide to rewrite. I can decide to add something. I can decide to omit something pending on my own point of view. So, no style of narrative is static. All the elements used in writing narratives are dynamic. So, it depends on who is writing. It depends on who is writing and it depends on how he wants to write. So you see, you cannot compare the work of Wole Shoenka and the work of Chinua Achebe. You see, they are different in entirely. Of course, Wole has a style, Chinua Achebe has a style. Wole writes for the elites, Achebe writes for the market woman. Everybody, irrespective of your educational status. So, it depends on your style, like I said. Relatives are social. They are at the heart of how we communicate as social being. Somebody say, you write the way in line with your temperament. Well, it's not far-fetched from that. There are many things that inspire the way you write. There are many things that inspire the way you think. So like I said, it depends on what you know, the experiences you've had, and how you want to pass it. So if you look for definitions, descriptions, and discussions of what narratives are, you will find many references to the natural humanity of narratives. They are a part of who we are and how we share that with others. So, it depends on the kind of article you want to read now. Some could be bore, some could be interesting, uh, some could be dry. <laughs> like some of you call it. But what may be dry to you may be interesting to another person. So some of this work of art, it's uh, could work on your psychology because there are certain things you expect in the narrative that you may not see. But that does not mean that a narrative is boring. So narratives sometimes work in line with what the writer has in mind, not just what you think the writer should display or should put into his work. So there is good chance the author did not make a good use of narrative and thus never managed to draw you in. So if the writer does not consider his audience, of course, the narrative is going to look as if it's boring. Like I said, if Wole Shoenka writes because he has a target of a particular audience. It depends how the writer is going to be. So it's going to be boring to an average reader like people in early secondary school age or stage. 
So goes the story. Alright. So having said all this, we'll come to the end of uh, discussing what a narrative is. And the assignment I want to take home today is you distinguish between a trauma and a prose. Hmm? Identifying the particular element. Sorry for that mistake there. It's supposed to be identifying the peculiar peculiar elements. So look for some of those things that are peculiar to a prose, to a narrative, uh, that are also peculiar to drama. Some concepts that you see in a narrative that you may not see in a drama. Of course, e.g., a drama has every drama must carry the element of stage direction, but you don't see that in prose. So this is the thing I expect you to do. Thank you for listening. I hope we'll see you again where we'll continue on our discussion on elements of a prose. Thank you.